Good morning, this is the tutorial on atrial septal defect. My name is Shiraz. So let's look at uh, atrial septal defect in a bit more detail now. So uh, essentially it's a hole between the left atria and the right uh, atria. Between the left and right atria you have your interatrial septum that you can see over here. When you have a defect in the septum, in the middle uh, you call it a secundum type of atrial septal defect let me play play this clip for you you can see this red jet coming from the left atria into the right atria so there's blood flow coming from the left atria to the right atria the reason for this is so the pressure in the left is greater than the pressure on the right so this because this shunt is quite low pressure jet it's usually not going to produce a murmur so why do we get a murmur in atrial septal defect? So we know that the blood would go from the left atria into the right atria, across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, and from there it would get pushed into the pulmonary artery. So there's excess blood flow across the pulmonary valve, and this causes a pulmonic ejection murmur. It's not usually as harsh as harsh a murmur as you would hear in a typical pulmonic stenosis, only much softer. So how do you differentiate between um, murmur in pulmonic stenosis and atrial septal defect? One, it's usually not harsh and the second and perhaps most important thing is that uh, the second heart sound you will have a fixed splitting in ASD whereas you will have a normal variable splitting with ASD. Now what do you mean by splitting? So you know that the second heart sound has two components A2 and P2 2 is the aortic valve closing and P2 is the pulmonic valve closing. So when you take a deep breath, obviously your venous return increases, the pulmonic valve, valve closes later than the aortic valve, so there's a split there and it increases when you're taking a deep breath and decreases when you're uh, breathing out. So that's called a variable splitting. Now because there's a big hole between the left and right atria, the pressure difference between the right and left is obliterated so there's uh, no delayed closure of the pulmonic valve in inspiration so that will lead to uh, a fixed splitting rather than a variable splitting so the best place to listen for murmur in atrial septal defect is obviously the pulmonic area which is the left upper sternal edge uh, there's Atrial septal defect usually doesn't cause cardiac failure like a large ventricular septal defect. The main uh, reasons for closing these defects are uh, something else. Right, okay, so the classification of the defects, uh, you could uh, call them uh, small, medium or large. It's one way of classifying it. Uh, but perhaps a more useful way of classifying it is actually by the location. So let me just draw a picture over here. So you have your uh, left atria over there, your right atria over there, and your interatrial septum over there. Now, if you uh, have an ASD right in the middle, this is called a secundum type of ASD. We know that all fetuses have a small hole, uh, which is called the foramen ovale. If that remains patent, we call it a Patent for Amen ovale, otherwise PFO. PFO is usually only 3 mm or less in size. If you have a hole right in the middle which is greater than 3 mm, you call it a secundum ASD. If you, hold, if you have a hole right at the bottom over here, we call it a premium ASD. Now, premium ASD is a type of endocardial cushion defect because obviously just below it is your tricuspid valve, your mitral valve, your LV, your RV, your septum. So if you have a defect there, you can see that uh, it might affect uh, the AV valves, it might affect, they might also have an additional hole over there. So premium defect most people would argue that is not just a pure straightforward ASD but it's uh, uh, perhaps a part of uh, a wider condition called atrioventricular 
septal defect which is very common in children with Down syndrome. Now right at the top we know that on the left side you have the pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins joining in. On this side you have the superior vena cava joining in. Here as we see. So if you have a defect somewhere over here for that reason we call it sinus venosus defect sinus venosus defect so usually when you have a hole over there one of these pulmonary veins join another into the right side so the sinus venosus defect is usually associated with partial anomalous pulmonary venous return uh, so one of these pulmonary veins can drain into the right atria so <clears throat> that will bring us to uh, uh, treatment and why do we need to uh, treat uh, ASDs? Why don't we just leave them alone? Because uh, we said that it doesn't cause cardiac failure. Now the reasons are uh, uh, these. Now let's imagine a hole over there. It's constantly shunting left to right. Let's assume that on the um, on the right side, for whatever reason, the person has uh, a few. Uh, Plots. So there is the shunt is usually left to right, so nothing ever happens. But for 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 whatever reason, for example, if you're doing a valsalva and then you release, then obviously your shunt can go from right to left as well. In that situation, what will happen is these clots will go into the left atria through the mitral valve over here into the left ventricle from and that's left ventricle so the clot can go from the LA to the LV and from LV into the aorta and this can go into your brain and give you a stroke so that's one of the reason we close uh, holes uh, the other reason is uh, let's assume you have a hole long-standing hole over there what will happen in the long run this constant blood flow from the left atria to the right atria from the right atria there's excess blood flow into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve and this obviously goes into the lung isn't it so this goes into the lung right and left lung so it's constant over circulation into the lung through the lung arteries and eventually what will happen is there's increased pulmonary vascular resistance so we call it pulmonary hypertension so once you develop pulmonary hypertension you go cyanotic because your shunt will turn from right to left because the pressure on the right side has increased so this is uh, widely thought to be a uh, uh, irreversible condition and uh, your mortality is quite high once you go into pulmonary hypertension and once your shunt reverses uh, we call shunt reversal from left to right to right to left Eisenmenger phenomenon Eisenmenger phenomenon. Once you have the Eisenmenger syndrome, then it's very difficult to treat. You can't really close the defect anymore. So for that reason, we have to close these uh, ASDs, even though it doesn't cause a lot of problem at a young age. So how do we close it? So if you have an ASD, right like that, you could actually put a device in. So the main thing is uh, the device should have adequate rims at the top, bottom front and back to be able to anchor itself so if you have adequate rims on all four ends then a device closure uh, is the way forward it's a day case usually done as a day case they don't need to go on bypass machine they don't need to uh, uh, they don't need to bypass they don't need a big uh, thoracotomy like uh, they don't need any of that like you would need in a surgical repair but you can't often do it because obviously the rims are often inadequate you can't do it if the defect is there for example the premium defect you can't do it if the defect is a sinus venosus defect for those other indications and the second defect without adequate rims you will have to resort to surgical treatment so obviously surgery is uh, done on bypass so it's cardiopulmonary bypass you'll need a midline sternotomy or a mini sternotomy 
some surgeons do a, a bikini line insert incision for girls especially um, which uh, can be uh, quite cosmetically more acceptable than a midline stenotomy uh, and then obviously the closure if you have a very small hole the surgeon might be able to do a primary repair just with sutures if you have a big hole you need to put a patch so the patch is usually the pericardial patch it can be autologous from uh, you know uh, from the same person if it's a small hole it's uh, usually a bovine patch if it is uh, a large hole so once uh, this is treated it's pretty good if it's a device closure um, they need to be on aspirin for six weeks or so and then we can stop the aspirin once the endothelium is formed over the device if it's a surgical closure uh, uh, it's just the usual post-operative precautions you need to do an echocardiogram um, infrequently after the surgery to make sure there is no pericardial effusion which occasionally happens it usually resolves on its own if it's large it will need draining right. so this is uh, an example of the early case you know the show video I showed earlier that's LA and the RA and now the patient has got a device so the patient now has a device over there uh, which uh, has sorted him you can see it looks quite bulky now this is uh, a few months after it's been inserted and the endothelium would have grown over it but usually it's a straightforward procedure obviously the risk with device is obviously this device just after it's released can actually there is a risk of its dislodging and flying off into the one of the cardiac chambers if that happens they might go on to need surgery so that's a brief overview of uh, atrial septal defect. Hope you found uh, the tutorial useful. Thank you for watching today. Thank you.